get into the Word? Are you, uh, I don't know, I'm excited about the Word every time. Every Sunday, every time I get the opportunity to, to, uh, to preach or to uh, teach the Word, it's, it's always exciting to me because I know that through the Word, we can transform people's lives. It's, I can stand up here and give you all my poetic, audible, I can't even think of the right words to use there because I don't have any of those things. I don't have that ability, that eloquence of speech and all that kind of stuff. I can't give you a, a, a rousing you know, uh, uh, speech that will in, inspire you and you know, motivate you and spur you up and all that kind of stuff. I mean, we can do all that, but it fades quickly. But if we can get the Word of God in you, and now what comes with that is the anointing. So every word, every verse, every word within every verse has an anointing. It has the anointing of God to accomplish what he has sent that word out to do. And so within that is that power and that ability. And so when we present the gospel, when we present the word of God, and we study it, and we talk about it, and we read it for ourselves, when we read our chapter every day, when we do all those things, that word is alive. It's not just a nice story. It's not just uh, uh, ink and paper. It's not just... Um, nice poems and though it is it's not just great literature though it is it's not just you know great stories though it is you know it's not just all that but it is literally the voice of god it is god speaking to us he's he's spoken into men so that they could write it down so that we could read it and then now we can speak it out of our mouths and that's the whole purpose and why god put together his word and so that word now has power it has the ability to accomplish so when when we read scripture after scripture that God's our healer, that he's the one that provides healing, we can now receive not only that truth, but we can receive that anointing, that power, that ability that will heal our bodies. And so it's, it's a uh, transforming book, and that's what Faith Connection is all about. And we're going to get into that here shortly. Um, if you've got your Bibles, go to Proverbs. We uh, want to talk about vision. So back in February, we did our Vision Sunday, and we give you a vision list. And we have a couple up here. If you didn't fill out a vision, uh, your vision list in February, we can get you a, a new, uh, new one, and you can fill it out this week. We'll, we're going to talk about that a little bit. But I wanted to stir us up and remind us of what our vision was. We, back in February, what did we put on our vision list? What did we say that we wanted to be and do at the end of the year what do we want to accomplish this year and so we're halfway through and you might say well i haven't accomplished anything on my vision list well that's not the the important part you may get to the end of the year and say well i've accomplished a few things but there's some things i haven't accomplished that's not the issue it's what you are putting your faith at what you are putting in front of your eyes on a consistent regular basis this is what i'm believing for and what you believe for is what will come to pass in your life. Because if you don't have a vision for it, if you don't have a, a, um, a faith for it, if you don't have a, an expectation of it coming to pass, if you don't have an excitement for it, then it's not going to come to pass. Now, here's the, here's the th deal about when I talk about an excitement for it, a passion for it, a, all those kind of things. Let's, let's c compare this to an Olympic athlete. So his passion, his vision, his excitement, his, you know, all that he's excited about is a gold medal standing on the platform. Well, what does it take to get there? We only get that opportunity every four years. So let's say he has four years to get there. How is he going to, what does he have to do? It's all this grinding out every day, all that hard work, getting up every morning, exercising and doing everything that that Olympic athlete has to do to get ready for the event. And... So our vision is not just a one-time deal that we put our excitement into that and now we have it, but it is a process that we've got to live our life through. And so he's excited about that, uh, that opportunity, that chance to, to compete in the Olympics and to be there and you know, to, to do his best. And, and he's hoping that his best will get him on the platform that he can put a, you know, somebody will put a medal around his neck and, and, and he'll win the prize. And uh, the Word of God tells us that we are to live our life and to go about this Christian walk as one who runs a race 
and one who runs to win. And that's the way we got to be with our vision statement. Tomorrow, the, the problem is excitement and passion and all that wanes away. It kind of fades off sometimes. And that's why we need our vision list that we can pull it back up and get it in front of our eyes and go, okay, this is what I'm, this is what I'm believing for. Now it's time for me to apply my faith, to stand on it, expect it, and just start to be, start to, th start thanking God for what He's going to do before you have it. You start thanking Him for the answer before you ever have the, the, the manifestation of it, the, before it's ever in your hands. So I was, I was saying about if you had your Bibles, go to Proverbs 29. I'll let you get started going there. Um, you know, vision is a, uh, is a, oh, a contra not controversial, but a slippery slope kind of thing. Because, you know, who is to say that your vision is from God? That your vision is what God is, is God inspired vision in your life. That the things that you're, you know, putting on your vision list and you're putting your faith to, who is to say that they are God's vision? And, so, and a lot of times, we, um, within the body of Christ, we hear somebody that has a very high vision list, a very, you know, they have high lofty goals. They got a, you know, big things that they're believing God for. And we kind of think, well, well, who do they think they are? They, you know, they're kind of getting a little too big for their britches. You know, they're kind of stepping out there, you know, well, holy cow, what are they, what's their deal? And it's like, as long as they're believing something that's comparable to ours, we're okay. But once they get out there in front of us, we kind of think, well, maybe they're not, you know, they're just wishing and a dreaming. No, they've got a vision from God. Well, what is a vision from God? And that's what I wanted to kind of talk about today. So let's go to Proverbs 29. And we're going to look at verse 18. And we're going to look at this in four different versions, Bible translations, um, so that we can get a little better understanding out of it. So we're going to look at it in the King James first. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he who keeps the law, happy is he. So we want to look at the first half of that verse. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So where there's no inspired, uh, um, there's no expectation, there's no passion, there's no excitement, there's no vision of, of what we're expecting and what we're believing God to do and accomplish in our life. Where that doesn't exist, what happens to us? We perish. Well, perishing is not just dying. It's like if you went back to the, the old days of kings and, and castles and all that, you could siege a city. So you'd set up where nothing goes in and nothing comes out. You stop the water from flowing in. You hurl dead animals into the, into the kingdom over the wall so that disease starts you know, getting, so now people are starving, they have no water, their disease is, is rampant, they, they are, are um, perishing. And so that, it's not just being killed outright, but you just this slow, painful, miserable existence of dying. That, that's the best way I can use, explain perishing. So let's go to the New King James uh, for this verse. It says, where there is no re revelation, the people cast off restraint. So this gives us a little bit completely different understanding of this verse, where there is no revelation. Revelation is what God inspires in us. So we can read the Word of God and understand it intellectually. We can understand what the words on the pages mean and say, just like reading a novel or reading a textbook or a math book or history or whatever we understand what is being said. But with that comes no revelation, no heart understanding. So what revelation is, is when God takes the words on the page and now reveals something of that to you personally. That's a revelation. And that revelation can be shared among each other. And we can share that to our families. We can share that to our children. We can share those revelations among each other. And so revelation is a is a tremendous thing that we need to have so that we understand that because this is a living document and it is God's voice, it is God speaking to us today, then we need to understand it in our spirit man because God is spirit. He speaks in spirit language. He
He communicates that way, and so we need to hear it and receive it in our spirit, man. That's revelation. So if we don't have that, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. In other words, we have no boundaries in our life. We have no, you know, no, I, I won't pass this line. I won't go that way. I won't, I won't shade things. I won't say something bad about somebody that's not true. I won't, even if it is true, I'm not going to say it about them. You know, I won't, you know, I'm not going to do certain things and I have boundaries in my life. Well, without revelation, without the inspired word of God in your heart and in your spirit, man, then we just, we go anywhere. We have no boundaries. We can just go anywhere. And we see that in our world. I mean, I get around people and they, you go, boy, you have no boundaries whatsoever. You have no restraint. You have no, they'll just say anything, do anything. It doesn't matter. As long as it benefits them, they're going there. So let's go to the New Living Translation. It says, where people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. I thought that was a, a good you know, out of the King, out of the New King James, this is kind of the uh, a better understanding of it, where there's no divine guidance. In other words, there's no a revelation is God speaking to us today, personally, to us, to you, personally. He's He's instructing, He's guiding you. He's He. And it, you know, Jesus said, "I'm going to send." He had to when He died on the cross. He said, "I'm going to go home. I'm going to go to heaven, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, and He will be your comforter and your guide. He will." show you things to come. He will guide you into all truth. That that's what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. So that's what the Holy Spirit does in us. He is the voice of God. The Holy Spirit is. He's the voice of God to our spirit. And so as we hear him speak to us, we now have guidance. We have direction. We have inspiration. We, have, we know the path. We know where we're going. Now we have narrowed our vision. We've, or we've narrowed our, our, um, our focus and we're now going where God wants us to go. And when you do that, people say, well, you're really narrow-minded. Exactly. Yes, I am. I'm very narrow-minded. Whatever the Holy Spirit tells me, that's what I do. Whatever he tells me to say, that's what I say. Whatever he tells me to do, that's what I do. I'm very narrow-minded. And the reason is because I know that is what is best for me. I will not perish. I will not die. I will not, and I won't run wild. I won't just... You ever know, know people that Man, they're all hot about this, this activity, this thing, this. Man, they're all, and then all of a sudden they go, oh, look at this. Let's get all excited about this. Come on, everybody help me with all this. And they're like, well, how about this? We'll just do all this. And I mean, you have people that just run back and forth, back and forth. But those people that are narrow-minded, they're focused on what God has told them to do, and that you can't get them off of that. I love pastors that are narrow-minded. <laughs> I have a lot of pastor friends that, that or maybe they're not personal friends, but just people I admire from a, from a distance, you know, but I see their ministry, and they are laser-focused on what God has called them to do. And nothing gets them off of that. People from, can come in and come into the church and be there for a while, and then they'll say, well, we'd like to start this new work, this new ministry, this new outreach, whatever. And they're like, sorry, it's not part of the laser vision. That's not part of this vision. That's not part of what God has called us to do here at this church. And they don't get sidetracked. They don't go off doing stuff that seems great. It's all good stuff, but it's not God's stuff for them. And I love that about some And then you see other churches, they have more programs than you can shake a stick at. I mean, you get in there and they, they're just programs for everybody and anything, and it, but they're so scattered and they're so unfocused and their resources are spread so thin their people are spread thin they've got people working in 18 different ministries at one time or maybe not 18 but you know they're working in four or five and they're just wore out and they perish and they get beat up and they get they just run wild they just do whatever they think should be done and and none, none of it's that focus that what god that's not the the leading of the holy spirit what they're supposed to do all right, we're going to look at this in one more. Is a, um, what's the other one? The Message Bible. We're going to look at this in the Message Bible. Uh, the Message Bible to me is just fun. Sometimes I just like, okay, let's just see what the message. I had never used the Message Bible as a, uh, as a um, starting point. Like this is where I'm going to really, I got to get back to the King James or the New King James and, or New Living Translation. I get back to those three. Okay, what do they say? That gives me a foundation. I, I know that I can trust that and start from there. But the Message Bible, I don't know, it's just fun sometimes because it puts it in language that 
we don't even speak anymore, but it's fun. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what He reveals, they are most blessed. So when we attend to what God is revealing to us, what's that? That's revelation. He's revealing things to us. And so we now have revelation of the Word of God. We have revelation of what God is doing. So if people can't see what God is doing, and that's the part that I want to focus on with this translation, we've got to see what God is doing. That's vision. It's seeing it through the eyes of faith. It's seeing it through our spirit man. It's not seeing it in the natural. It's not seeing it already completed, but it's seeing what God is going to do. And so when we started Faith Connection, we had a vision for what God was going to do. He had a, he had a you know, he showed us what he was going to do. And so we had to have that focus for that. And anyhow, all right, let's go to, uh, let me see if I want to do this yet or not. I do not. All right, so last February, we, or not last February, this February, this past February, we talked about what is vision that it is um, a vivid, crystal clear uh, image of what God has in store for us, what God is calling us to do, where God is taking us, what the direction is, what the guidance and the ins inspiration of Him, of the Holy Spirit is, where He is showing us where He wants us to go. It's that absolute crystal clear vision of that, where we can see it through the eyes of faith. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Everybody shake their head. Okay. Um, so, let me give you an example. If you got it in your heart, okay, I, I, I know that God wants me financially blessed, and He wants to increase me, and so we start saying that my vision is that I will be increased financially that that's what God's going to do. And here's the thing. That is unclear. That is unspecific. That is not the kind of vision that God has for us. Because I can give you $20 and you're increased. But you go, well, I'm trying to get out of debt and I've got X number of thousands of dollars of debt that I need to get rid of. And, that, and, if, and if I can get out of debt, then I'll have the income or have the resources to do what I need to do that God's calling me to do. Debt is probably the biggest killer of the, um, the work that God has for us to do because we can't, it is a weight. And remember we looked at a verse that says cast away. We did this Thursday night, didn't we? Was that we need to cast off every weight, every weight that, that, holds us back and to get rid of every sin that easily besets us. And that weight is not just, it may not be a sin, it's just things that aren't what God has for us, what He wants us to do. And debt is a, is a big killer. It binds our finances. So we are now um, controlled that I have to have so much of my finances in order to support my debt that I need so much a week, a month, or whatever to, to pay my debt. And so I can't use those resources that God has given me, but I have to service my debt with it. Well, that limits what God can do with us because we're always bound by, uh, by debt. Let me give you the, the, the scripture that say that the, that the borrower is servant to the lender. Another word for that servant is slave. We are enslaved to our debt. It's just like a, a ball and chain, you know, that just slows us down. We can't run full tilt for God. We can't run the race that, that God has given us because we're, ser we're servicing debt. We're held back by that. And so we need to cast those things off. All right. So a true vision has to be crystal clear. In other words, it's not ambiguous. It's not, well, I, I'd like to get in better physical shape. We'll walk around the block once and you'll be in better physical shape. You know, I mean, it's just, 
you know, what, what do you mean by that? Well, I want to lose X number of pounds. I want to be able to lift so much weight. I want to be able to do so many push-ups. I want to be able to do one more pull-up in my life. You know, <laughs> you know there, was, there was a time when uh, I had a track coach that had us, not just me, but all of us, in the best physical shape of our entire lives. I got, I got to look back at my senior year in track was the best physical shape I ever was. And it was because of my coach. I, didn't, I wasn't in that good a shape when I was in wrestling or, or in football. I played all three sports. It was that track coach that had us in the best physical shape I was ever in. And it was because he had a vision for us. He had a goal and objective. Well, what it took for to get us to that point was all this hard work through the whole season that he kept pounding us. We ran bleachers. We ran laps. We ran all the way around the, the property, all the way around the school. We ran the outside of the property. And then, then he said, okay, now we're going to go, we're going to add this little loop up around through the woods, and we're going to go down and run out the road and back. You know, And he just kept adding to that as the season went along. We kept going further and further. And he, and he would take us, if it was raining, we didn't, cancel practice we went inside we, well if it was raining we still practice outside if it was thundering and lightning then we would go inside but down in uh, at the high school down in the basement under the pool is where all the wrestling rooms are and it's where all the there's a hallway and back then when I was in school 30 years ago um, there was a whole row of pull-up bars and they were this big steel angle iron and pipe and I mean they were welded and they were bolted to the wall and we'd all hang on it all of us at one time and it was this big long thing and we'd have to hang there and then put our feet out straight out and just hold that seemed like for hours it was just seconds but it seemed like forever and he just had us he just kept pushing it and he was this the best way to describe him he was a pear he was shaped like a pear he was not in any shape I don't think he, he ran out of breath just walking from the school out to the track. He was in no physical shape whatsoever, but he knew how to get us into shape. And, you know, to have a vision, have a, a laser focus is this is where I want to get to and this is what I want to do and be, is that for us, as the athletes on that team that season, we had a very limited vision. We, we knew we wanted to be better at what we did. We wanted to, you know, I... I couldn't run fast, I couldn't run long, I couldn't throw things very well, so I did pole vaulting of all the crazy things, but that's what I did. And I enjoyed it, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. So I had a height that I wanted to be able to clear. And there was a height you had to clear to get to districts, and that's, that was my goal. And screwy enough, I made it. You know, I made it to districts. Never made it to states, but I made it to districts. And, and the, um, the, the whole uh, goal of getting to that you know, I, I didn't know what it took to get there, but he did. My coach did. So when we say, well, I want to be out of debt and I want to be, I want to be whatever. I want to serve God in this particular way. I want to be better. Um, just trying to think of how to, how to say this. I want to know the word of God better. I want to understand the word of God better so that I can share it with people and I can teach it and preach it. I want to you know, there's just all these things that you may, you say, well, that, this is my goal. This is my vision where I want to get to. I believe this is what God's calling me to. But now, I don't, how do I get there? I need that guidance that we read in that scripture. I need the guidance of God. I need vision. I need him to show me what to do on a regular daily basis. I need coached. So I need him to show me where I'm going and what I'm doing and what I need to do so that I can get to the end result, the vision that I want. And so often we, we, we say, well, I got a vision for this, but then we don't do nothing to get there. I have a vision to lose 20 pounds, and we never walk around the block. We never change our diet. We never do whatever it takes, you know, and do the things that we know we should be doing. Ouch. Say ouch or amen, one or the other. <laughs> I'm up here saying ouch the whole time, so um, that's, a, that's a sore spot for me. All right. So last uh, February, we, we were talking about vision and, and all these things and, and what vision is. And, and we looked at those, those uh, Proverbs 29, 18, all those different translations. And so we talked about um, 
Let me take you to Numbers 24. That's where I want to go next. Numbers 24 and verse 16. Here's a good question for you for you to find out on your own. Why did they call this book Numbers? Why is this book in the Bible titled Numbers? Dan asked that this morning. Study that. Find out why. All right. Numbers uh, 24 and where are we at? 16? Yeah, 16. You there yet? All right. The, the entrance of him who hears the words of God and has the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down with eyes wide open. Now this is kind of, this is one verse, one phrase out of an entire prophecy that was spoken. Um, so we need to keep it in context, but I just want to pick out a few things out of this, out of this verse. Because it's, it's speaking of vision and, and what we see God's showing us. Because here's the, here's the deal. We, we get so focused on seeing with our natural eyes, feeling with our natural hands, and hearing with our natural ears. We get so focused on this natural world that we miss out on the parts, the best parts of life, which are the things you can't physically acknowledge. You can't smell them, you can't taste them, you can't see them, you can't hear them. Let me give you an example. Love. Draw me a picture. You can draw me what love looks like to you, but you, you know, like two people walking with holding hands, or, you know, you can draw something like that, but that doesn't define what love is. Love is felt. It is experienced. It is, it is a, you know, it is something that you have uh, emotion that you have acquired. Hate is another one that is you can't. We can show you pictures of people that are experiencing hate and are you know putting out hate, but that's not what really hate because it's a condition of the heart. It's a condition of your emotion, and so the best parts of life. The faith, the joy, the peace, the gentleness of God, the, the faithfulness of God, the favor of God, the blessings of God, all those things are not seen. And so we get so focused on the natural material world that we miss out on the best parts of life. And that's what vision is. Vision is God showing you things to come, things that you can't see now with your natural eyes, things that you can't hear and smell and taste and all that kind of stuff. I was saying that love is one of those things, and, and it, it my, what came up in my memory was that a lot of people have a song. You know what I mean? When they when they were first dating, they have their song. So when that song comes up, it evokes that emotion of love. So it's something that they hear with their audible ears, or it was a it was a smell. It was whatever a particular restaurant that they that they were at when they were dating and in that, that environment, that smell, those sounds, that taste, that all those things really speaks love to them. You know, it's kind of like, yeah, I remember all, and you get all ooey gooey and feeling all those feelings again, and those first feelings of new love and all that kind of stuff. But the, the love of God is not all those things that we can um, pick up or understand with our emotions, though. I have those same things from when I was born again back in, you know, I was born again in 79. And in that time, there was Christian songs that were popular of the day. And so every once in a while, I hear those songs. And they take me back to that little church where, you know, I spent a year trying to understand this whole God thing and finally came to the point where I, I just like, okay, I'm never going to understand this. I just need to receive Christ. I just need to. And in fact, I didn't even know. My prayer was, Lord, I, I said, God, I, don't, I, I need you. I want you. I don't understand this whole Jesus guy, but if he's part of the package, I'll take it all. You know, and that's kind of not exactly what I said, but, you know, it's kind of I didn't really have a, a, a very good understanding of everything yet. You talk about 
you know, I was 17 and you, t you told me Bible stories of David and Goliath and all that. And I'd go, who? You know, like, what? You know, I wasn't raised in church. I wasn't raised in Sunday school and learning all those things. So I've had to learn all those things, you know, through the process of time. But the, all those emotions that we associate with things, we can associate those things with the Word of God, with God's vision that He has for us. That when we, when we receive that vision, we can have a physical context to it, this natural material world context to it, but we got to understand that that's a very limited, very low level of understanding of it. We need to have this revelation that's in our heart. And those are the people that are laser focused. Those are the people that are narrow minded, we would call them. They are focused on what God has instructed them, what God has set before them, the vision that God has given them. And when they stay on that, there is no getting off of it. All right. Where are we at? We're in numbers. So in this verse, it says, uh, the utterance of him who hears the words of the words of God and has the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty. So he sees the vision. So we're we're thinking of a, a visual vis, a visual thing that he sees it with his eyes, and that's not what this verse is talking about. He sees it with his heart. He sees it with his spirit, man. He sees, sees it with his faith. He sees things that aren't, don't exist. He doesn't see a, a full picture of it, but he sees an end result. And so when he gets to that end, he may not, it may not come out to look like what he expected exactly, but it will be what he expected. It will be what the vision was that he had for him. Do you ever go somewhere on vacation and you were all excited about going there and you got there and it just wasn't everything you expected it to be? Or it is way more than you ever expected it to be? You know, like a five-year-old going to Disneyland, he just has one little narrow vision of going to Disney World. But when he gets there, man, his vision has been expanded. And I think that's what heaven's going to be. We have this little wee vision of what heaven's going to be like. and we get there, it's going to be astronomical. And I can't wait. I'm excited about getting there. I'm not in a hurry, but I'm excited about getting there. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, we got work to do here, and we're going to complete our course. We're going to live a long life, and we're going to be satisfied, and we're going to, you know, uh, do all that we've been called to do. All right. In on our, um, I have a little slide up there. Is uh, why faith connection exists. Um, is that legible with that blue? It's like should have been a darker color, huh? So. Why does faith connection? And the, the simplest way I can, I can uh, express that is that because we have a passion for the Word of God. And the reason we have a passion for the God, Word of God is because we believe the Word can transform any life. Anyone's life can be transformed by the Word of God if you'll open yourself up to it. If you'll receive it, believe it, and, and do what the Word of God tells you to do. If you will... Uh, and, and there is nothing else in this world, in this material world, that can do that. We can have, um, you know, great coaches and great mentors and great people that can instruct us of how to handle our finances and how to take care of our physical bodies and, you know, uh, nutritionists and, you know, um, whatever. We could, in any area of life, there's always somebody who's an expert who can train us and, and teach us how to be better at that. But it's the Word of God that transforms a life. So I can't just, I can, I can do all kinds of things to make life better in the natural, but I can't transform my life and come out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of God's, of God's kingdom. I can't do that without the Word of God. I can't be transformed and through that be transformed in every area of my life. Whether it's my relationships, you know, we can go to all the marriage counselors and all that, but until we have a revelation of, from the Word of God, we have a revelation of, of God in our hearts, that's when a marriage can be saved, can be not go from good to better to even to great. You know, it can, it can advance from no matter how good it is, it can become even better. And that only happens through the Word of God. 
and uh, anyhow. All right. So we believe that this can happen, and how in any you know the work. <laughs> my brain is going much faster than my mouth can go. <laughs> like, slow down. Okay. So we believe the word can transform any life, and it can do that spiritually, physically, financially, and socially in every aspect of life. It's not just a spiritual thing. It's not just about getting your way to heaven. It's not just about having nice, warm, fuzzy feelings every time you come to church. It's about transforming ourselves physically. It's about transforming ourselves financially and socially in every aspect, in every area of life. Our, our world, what we call our little world, our little, our little patch of this globe, you know, we have this little wee spot on this globe we call the, our world. And it's so small, and yet it can be transformed by the power of God. And it's through the Word of God that that happens. It doesn't happen through great preaching, great oratory, great teaching. It happens because of the Word of God. Now we can hear the Word preached, but we've got to now get it into our hearts to where we believe it, and we receive it, and it gets, starts to transform our lives. So that's why Faith Connection exists. The, the next slide we uh, talked about our mission the mission of Faith Connection is to help people live a life of faith in God. And that seems very simplistic. That's our laser focus. You know, for Faith Connection, this is what we are committed to. And so if whatever we do doesn't do this, we ain't going to do it. You know what I mean? We can have the greatest outreach program, the greatest community, you know, program or do whatever. But if it doesn't help people live a life of faith in God, there's no use in us doing it. Because we're not going to be doing what God gave the vision for us for Faith Connection to do. All right? That seems very narrow-minded, and it is. You're absolutely right. I'm about as narrow-minded of a guy as you'll ever meet when it comes to this. comes to this. A focused, simple. I am simple. We keep it simple because I'm simple, because <laughs> I need it simple. And I know that why, you know, there's nothing in the Word of God that's complex or hard. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You have to be a highly educated theologian to make it complex. You really do. I mean, there's nothing hard in the Word of God at all. And, and so it is simple. God made it simple, not because we're a bunch of simpletons that we need it simple for us, but because He loves us. He's like, I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be a burden. Jesus says, come to me, all you are heavy laden and burdened, and I will, you know, I will take your burden and it will give you rest. You know, he, he wants to relieve us of the burdens that we have in our life, not add Christian religious burdens on top of us once we get born again. He's not trying to add to us. He's trying to set us free. He's trying to liberate us so that we can, we can live a simple, quiet, peaceable life. That's what he's promised us. And so how we do that, we got to know the Word of God. Because if we don't know the Word of God, what's going to happen? Religion's going to start piling on stuff to us. Well, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to act right. You've got to speak right. You've got to live right. You've got to do all these things. And yet, all we need to do is follow the Holy Spirit, and He will bring that revelation into us. And it's all what we call vision. You know, what, what is vision in your life and what He's doing for you. All right. So this uh, mission statement of, of helping people live a life of faith in God comes right out of uh, 1 Timothy 1 and 4 out of the New Living Translation. And um, uh, we don't need to, to uh, explore that. But, um, so that is the basis and the, the um, foundation from which all of, our, all of our preaching and teaching, everything that we do is accomplished. Um, you know, that's why we encourage people a spiritual discipline of reading your Bible, of praying, of spending time with God every day, those spiritual disciplines that we, we encourage. Um, that's why we try to have uh, inspiring worship. You know, um, I, I enjoy our videos. They're very um, um, well done. You know, they're, we find professional videos that lead us in worship. But I can't wait until we have our own worship team, that we have people lead us in worship. That is where I want to get to and where my heart is. Because it, um, within that, has the, it gives us the ability to have the Holy Spirit lead us in worship. 
where the videos are kind of static. You know, like there's there's the Holy Spirit in that video, but it was one time, it was recorded, it was, you know, put together, it was edited, and, you know, the Holy Spirit gave, put an anointing on that. And we always are looking for anointed music. We don't want just a good song that's popular of the day, even though it's a Christian song. We want some songs that have a, an anointing on them so that it leads us into worship. So that, that's an important part of, that's what uh, will help us live a life of faith in God. Um, building meaningful relationship with each other, you know, it's, it's not just about coming and, and getting preached at, but it's about fellowship and building relationship with each other. We could spend a lot of time on that, but I don't think I need to. Um, the next thing is that um, that by equipping people for ministry. So some will say, well, well, I, how do I, how do, I do this? I was saying about that, you know, having that laser focus, having that vision that is that is narrow and very specific and not getting off of that is that people will come and they'll say, well, I have a I have a vision for doing this or I think God wants us to wants me to do this ministry or this or that. My job as pastor and, and our job as faith connection is to help people be equipped for ministry. So getting equipped for ministry is not just about having the money and the resources and the building and the, you know, the, the tangible resources available, but it's about equipping people to do the work of ministry. Um, and it's about helping people find their place in ministry. Does that make sense? So it's like, So, and then I also ended it, on my notes, I ended it with three words, love, acceptance, and affirmation. So those are the things, how we help people live a life of faith in God is through love, acceptance, and affirmation. So when you're doing good, we're going to give you an attaboy. But when we're not doing good, we're going to love you enough to tell you, you know, there's a better way. We're not going to beat you down. We're not going to... Uh, put condemnation and, and, and strife on you, but we are going to build you up. Um, boy, there's a whole, much, whole lot there that I could go into. You know, there's one scripture that says, if you find a brother who has fallen into sin, restore him and also protect yourself that you don't fall into that sin. And so that's part of discipleship. That's part of uh, bringing people up and into ministry. Um, So, what I want, what I'm asking you to do is get out your vision list. I didn't tell you last week to bring it with you. I kind of gave you a hint that we would be talking about vision, but I wasn't 100% sure that this is where today's was going to go, but that's where it went. So, I want to encourage you, bring your vision list with you next week. We're going to reaffirm our faith, our commitment to that vision list, and we're going to present them to the Lord again and hold them up before Him. If you need, didn't didn't have one, we have them up here up front. We have a vision list that you can take with you. It just asks three simple things, you know, to uh, what do you want to do this year? And the first thing is, what do you desire to give into the kingdom of God in 2019? And this takes prayer. This takes seeking God out. What does He have a vision for us? financially to give into the kingdom of God. The third, the second thing is to list and add up all your debts and obligations, large and small. Add up all your debts so you know what you owe. If a lot of us uh, bury our head in the sand, we don't want to know what we owe. If we just ignore it, it'll go away. It's kind of like that ostrich thing. We just bury our head in the sand and hopefully it'll just go away. It'll somehow take care of itself, you know, through magic or something. I don't know what we, what we expect. It just... We just hope it'll go away. And what actually, most people, what happens to them is that it just keeps compounding. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so we need to get it written down and, and, and listed out. What are our debts and obligations? 
and then we're going to present it to the Lord and say, Lord, we're expecting supernatural debt reduction and elimination. That's what we're expecting. That's what we're believing for. That's what we're putting our faith to. The last thing that, that's on the vision list is, what do you want or to do if money were of no concern? What do you want to have or what do you want to do if money was of no concern? What's in your heart to, to do something? You know, it may be a vacation, it may be a car, it may be, who knows? It could be all kinds of things. But, or something for someone else. All right? So that's what um, our vision list, I'll just tell you what things we have put on our vision list here for Faith Connection. Um, so our desire to give in the kingdom of God is we've, we've been doing this, so we've fulfilled this, is to give. Uh, we're, we've increased our giving as a tithing giving church. We've increased it up to 12%. But our goal, our vision is that we would give um, a minimum of 4300 4,800, <laughs> I knew I needed my glasses to see whether it was an eight or a three, um, is to be able to put in $4,800 in, in a year's time into the kingdom of God, into other ministries. And so that requires a certain level of income into the into faith connection. So that's our faith, where we're putting it at. Um, list of our debts and obligations, we have none. Just our, our monthly bills. We have our lease and our rent here. Our utilities, you know, those are just our monthly bills that we have. We have no debt. We have no obligations that we are committed to. We have obligated ourselves to being partners with other ministries, and we've, you know, they have no um, demand on us that we have to give them so much a month, but we have put a, put a commitment to our, we've made a commitment, not an obligation. It would be a better way of saying that. So we do have some commitments that we have to give to other, other ministries and to be a blessing to them. And it's fun to uh, send them out. We have a thank you card sitting on a little table out here in the middle of the four little chairs out here in the, what do we call that area? The foyer, the entry, the gathering room, the connect center. It's all in there. <laughs> and, and, um, so there's a thank you card from, from uh, Melissa Silvis Ministries. And uh, so read that because that, they're thanking you. Because if you give into Faith Connection, if you give into the general fund, 12% of what you've given has gone into the, into the God Fund. And then out of that, we uh, give into other ministries. So the, uh, the third thing is, uh, what, do you want, what, do you, what do you want or to do if money were of no concern? So... Our list, we have uh, four things on that for Faith Connection. To have at least one salvation every week. That someone receives Christ through the work that we do here, at least one every week. Um, that we have a worship team. I talked about that earlier. That we have physical people up here leading us in worship, not videos. Um, the, the next thing was a place of our own debt-free. That we're not leasing a facility, but we have a place of our own that we that we can do that. I'm still um, just praying all that out as to how, what's the next step? What do I, what do we need to do now? What's the things we do now before we see, we can't just put that vision out there and go, okay, I hope that happens and then not do anything to get there. We need to do what God leads us to do. It's like, I want a really great job. I want a job that pays me more than it ever, I've ever made, gives me better benefits than I've ever had, has a great work environment. That's the job I want. And then we never put out applications. We never read the paper. We never search online for who's hiring. And, you know, we, we never go out looking. And you can't do that. You've got to do the work that it takes to, to get these things. And so we need to do our part. God will do his part. And he will... Um, magnify he will exponentially increase the little the little bit that we do he will increase and, and accomplish these things all right so place of our own uh the last thing is that we would receive a one-time offering of ten thousand dollars not that one person would do that but that we would have an offering that would um, be at or greater than ten thousand dollar one-time offering all right so that's where our faith is a uh 
have a, a pastor that I know of in Florida, and he, he had a vision a long time for $100,000, that, that they would have an offering of $100,000 come in. And he sat on that faith for a long time, spoke that for a long time. I've heard him say it over and over and again. Finally, it came. You know, I've heard other ministries that have, you know, hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars that they're believing for a one-time offering of, and, they, and it's come in. And, you know, it's where your faith is or where they're at. And where we're at is at $10,000. That's where we're, where we're at right now. We've had 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. You know, we've had, you know, offerings come in at, at that size. And uh, I thought 5,000 was the next good level that we could put our faith to. And God said, no, that's not a faith level. That's a hope and a wish. Now get your faith up. Where's your faith at? And where, where's the... Where's the end of, where's is your faith stretched to? And that's, you know, it's like take a rubber band. It'll only go so far. You can only stretch it so far. Well, that's our faith, you know. And God says, how far can you go? And I said, well, I think I can go to 10,000. But boy, that's, that's stretching it. <laughs> that's really putting it out there for me personally. And so uh, he's like, well, that's good. That's a good spot. Let's start there. We'll, we'll go to that level next. And he says, that's a good, good next step. He says, but there'll be a lot more steps after that one. So, all right. All right, so you got your instruction. Bring your, bring your, um, your vision list. Thank you. Bring your vision list with you next week. If you, if you need one, you can pick one up here and, and take it and fill it out. It's something you need to uh, spend some time with your family and, and pray about it and, and just really search your heart and your, and see what God is speaking to you, not just what you think in your head is doable, but what has God put in your heart? He's going to give you things that aren't doable, that seem impossible. And it's a great, that's why we serve an impossible doing God. I mean, he just does things that are just out of this world. <laughs> yep. And it's like, if you think, well, you know, if I add up, you add up all your debts and you go, I'll never get out of debt. You're exactly right. You've got to, you've got to change the way you speak about that debt. You've got to change the way you think about it. No, God can get me out of this debt. He's got a million and one ways to get me out of this debt. All I need is one of them. And so, Lord, I'm, I'm open to what you have for us to do.